touch base with our Comav project this morning. We got plasters on site and we are finally putting plaster on the walls. So we're gonna touch base and see how they're doing. The elevator is broken this week. So this has to still be changed. If you guys remember in a previous post, switching all those to blue board because of the absorption rate. Lasana. Going professional, man. Full house today. So, now that I'm out of breath. Got a lot of stuff going on in here. Again, we're gonna be switching these out. So, just to reiterate, these are designed for um, joint compound because they're for drywall. In Massachusetts, we blue board, which is what you see on these walls here. It's like a blue gray. And this gets a veneer coat plaster. Plaster absorbs differently than into blue board than it does, say, something set up for joint compound. So those are being swapped. Let me give you an example. This one here has already been swapped. Get the pro, the pro. <laughs> so you can see this has been swapped, but not only that, Steve, who works with Van Gerven, actually came up with this. I uh, this detail is here is these screws rather than just holding them into the board, they're actually made to be adjustable, and which is really important because if you go look, this needs to be 3 16 proud of the blue board for our veneer coat. You actually see in here, actually perfect using the big straight edge. Hey, I checked to see if the AC was on. He's just turning it up. Don't mind him. So this is the key to the flat ceiling here. It's things like this here. I think it's soldered together. And if I'm ever in your way, just push me. Yeah. If you look close, you can see the chalk line up there. Sets their ceiling height. You can drag back too. So this will be first room. We'll do ceilings first and then they'll do opposite walls, let that cure, or at least harden, and then do the other two walls. And that allows you to get a really true straight inside corner, rather than dealing with wet mud on both sides. Here, you guys remember the, the weedy tub? They're gonna start prepping this, getting this all weedied out. This wall panel has been done, that's so that they can get the door jam on. We'll go upstairs where there's a little bit more room and we can show some more detail here. So that door jam is done, installed. You can see the tape on the floor. And what we got going on is this right here is your mud jam or your mud flange, right? So if you can picture, there's a small bead right here and they'll get plastered at 3 16 So it's about 3 16 proud of the blue board on that bead. Down below here, we wanted this shadow gap to run through our door. And in order to do that, they needed to notch those metal jams. And then they mixed up a, a, a flexible epoxy, actually, uh, and basically epoxied the mud flange to a rabbited piece of poplar that continues all the way behind. Screed it pretty, pretty flat, let this cure, and then they'll sand this completely flush. So when this is all painted, this will be one continuous color. We get that shadow gap right here, and that will run through the door. And then up top, you basically have this 90 degree corner, and this will all be plastered. Man, that's gonna look good. So these are the Easy Jam doors. And there's a couple, there's two different kinds that we're using. This is a single rabbit jam. So you have the single rabbit here, solid back. These are concealed hinges. So these are made by Rock Hardware and these are out swing doors so the doors here is going to swing out and that's because that is a closet right here 
Now here, you actually see the hinge prep is a little different. These are barrel hinges and this is a in-swing door. So our door is actually outboard of our jam. And the reason we did that, what's up Patrick? We got the pro camera today. The door is actually designed to be flush with this, this hallway. So that way we get this continuous flat surface, no recessed uh, door. So this door will be on traditional barrel hinges, set outboard in the jam and actually swing in. So this is the in-swing version. Uh, what's really important to note is we need to make sure the head jam, they line up. Now, here's a great example. The, the, this door is actually shorter in height, okay? Because it sits underneath this. Otherwise, what you would think would be a, a door stop. Now, when you follow this across, this door actually switches. Also an in-swing door. See the hinge? This will swing out into the bedroom. But now, we're basically utilizing this edge and setting that the same height as this rather than out here. That way, when you're standing in this room, you get a continuous reveal line. And now all of those reveals will be the same, but every one of these doors will actually be a different height. A lot of work goes into this stuff. See our baseboard's done. It's a radiant heat cabinet. Baseboard over here. Oh, check out this detail. The guys actually dropped this, this needs a, um, a uh, sill, sorry, L losing my train of thought here. A, um, basically a threshold, which will be white oak to match the floor. You can actually see the white oak here. Uh, and they cut this down, so when you put the piece of white oak, that half inch shadow gap will actually go uh, right across that oak on the top. Again, it's just kind of thinking this, uh, it's really thinking this up through ahead of time glass pocket door that is made by ellipse um, you actually see the hardware is buried way up here this is our door finished door jam uh, soft open soft close but the hardware is way up there we'll get this piece of glass in this will get plastered so when it's shut all you'll see is a piece of glass that goes into this groove that the guys uh, built into this door jam you actually see there's a little kerf in there and that's so we can put in a piece of bubble gasket. So when the glass shuts, it gives a nice tight seal. Uh, and this is your master bathroom. This is the base coat cement plaster uh, in preparation for dev lime. I'll show what you, uh, we'll go downstairs and I'll show you dev lime in a minute. You can see all our glass channels all recessed. So that this will be flush with our finished product dev lime. Um, our niche back here on both sides. Check out this. I'm gonna show you guys a mistake. Or maybe not a mistake, but an oversight. Now, let me step back first. These are two pieces of stone. Um, and what they intend, they try to do is they try to line this up on the table to make it look like that V right here continues through. But when you're in the shower, you actually notice it's a little offset. So what we're doing right now is we're working with someone that does faux painting and that is familiar with this uh, to figure out if we can etch that and then paint it and repolish it, uh, which so far so good. Uh, and if that's the case, we'll probably do similar for that one and this one. That way it truly looks like one piece of stone. If we could have done it in one, we would have, but we could not have. What else we got going on? Our recessed glass channel here. How about this? Let me uh, walk down, down these stairs. Here's our structural aluminum. There's our finished floor. You can see it's buried. So when the glass is installed, this will actually get a piece of oak and the glass will look like it's buried into the oak flooring. It'll do the same thing over here. Glass will go into the wall, into that channel. It's left up high so you can lift the glass up and then drop it down into the floor. And once it's set into some silicone there, you'll be able to stop beating plaster right around it. And then leading up to the roof deck, we'll save that for another episode. 
Not bad though. A lot of detail. Let me show you what they're doing with the recessed lighting. Recess light cans. You can see all our all our recessed lighting is gonna be recessed, or not recessed, I should say, taped in, mudded in. And here's our mud flange. It's an eco down light. And if I pull this sideways, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch that they give you on that little flange right against the light for mud, which works works great if you're doing drywall and joint compound. Well, that doesn't work for us. So Steve, uh, that gentleman walking this way right there, has figured out he's gonna drill out these rivets. You got one, two, three, four, five, six rivets. And we'll take this can, this this can here, and basically move it from going being installed to the hole this way to installing it that way. And that, I'm gonna find a, a one that's done. Moving this flange here on the other side, gives, and which will end up with 3 16ths. Let me go find one that's done. Steve, you got one of those recessed light trims? Oh, sweet, perfect. One that I already did. Awesome. So here we go, you can actually see. So now, if I turn that sideways, you can actually see it's about 3 16ths proud versus that 16th, which gives us enough of a channel plaster up to. I don't know how I like the GoPro. No? It just feels like I'm, I'm holding a selfie stick. Man, it's hot up there. So plaster is actually about two months worth of work. There's an incredible amount of detail uh, and just a lot of intricate things that have to come together. Obviously you saw all the corner bead being soldered together, them using a big straight edge to make sure that all the, the surfaces are really planar. Uh, and that's gonna be done throughout all of the ceilings all of the walls we're really going for and i sometimes hate to use this word perfect finish um, and perfect i mean within a 30 second of flatness across entire surfaces so that's the first coat of two coats of plaster that they'll do um, which you don't see much so hope you guys enjoyed this we will uh we'll do these job walks a little bit more often uh, especially now that uh, I got the GoPro.